He's in it more than me. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, um, so I play this character called Michael McRae, who we meet at the beginning of the film, and it's established that he's a pretty, you know, small time crook, very small time, real bottom feeder, not much ambition, uh, very hungover, and uh, owes money anyway to this film, who is um, revealed as uh, a bit of a force. And then over the course of the film, we go on the run really from uh, uh, Perrier and his and his and his men, and then hilarity ensues. <laughs> <laughs> it came to me quite late. Uh, I was involved in um, some reshoots for Green Zone that were going on at one time, and I, so I didn't think I was available. And then there was a little window that happened, and then it, I mean I think the film had been talked about. Like, Killian had been talking to Mark Rowe, I think. Couple of years before an intermission about mm -hmm. the notion of it, but I think when it actually it all got the green light very quickly. Yeah. Uh, but like once you read the script, that was it. You have to do that kind of a character. It doesn't happen very often. So um, yeah, it was just I said yeah, if we can fit it in, we'll do that. That's for <laughs> sure. He's a gangster with a sensitive soul that doesn't exist except in his own head. <laughs> uh, and actually, he's a tow rag really. But he he does have a fine turn of phrase. I'll give him that. <laughs> and he does have aspirations towards sensitivity, which unfortunately are never realised. Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, he does. Not not through any skill of his own, really, I think, <laughs> but, but a lot of the time. You know, it, uh, as I was saying, it is it is like a study in how how low can you go before you're going to have to have to stand up and can things continue in a spiral of, you know, down downward trajectory before you're going to stand up and, and take charge. And, uh, I, I like that, you know, I like that. And then by the end of it, I think, even though he's physically ruined, I think he's kind of emotionally recovering. We had very little time, I think, you know, I mean, I think I was only about two and a half weeks on the set. And I think the overall shoot was about six or eight weeks or something like that, but it was very, quite tight. Um, so I, the idea was to try to do justice to all, you know, what was possible without kind, kind of um, hanging around. And Ian was great at keep, keeping it kind of moving at the same time, making sure that you know, we had what we needed before we moved on. So it was good. And there were a lot of people that, say, for me anyway, I would have worked with before, Liam Cunningham and people like that. Uh, so there was quite a lot of shorthand going on on the set. Mm -hmm. And we got there fairly fast. Um, and great to have Jim Broadbent and Jody and all those rest of it uh, to, in the mix as well. So it was good. It was really, it kind of felt really, really uh, energetic. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, a lot that is down to Ian, I guess. Mm -hmm.